Tonight on the South Today, a one-term councillor takes away Aaron Hawkins' seat and is crowned the new mayor-elect of Dunedin. Invercargill is in for a new mayor for the first time in 27 years as Sir, Sir Tim Shadbolt is left stunned. And one student isn't letting his disability hold him back from his thespian dreams. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Hannah Wilkins. The political winds of change are blowing strongly across the country with more right-wing candidates replacing those on the left side of the ledger. The story is the same in Dunedin, where Green Party-backed Mayor Aaron Hawkins has been unseated by a one-term councillor. New Dunedin Mayor Jules Radich celebrating his landslide victory. The one-term councillor achieved an overwhelming win over the weekend, unseating the former Mayor Aaron Hawkins comfortably. The new Mayor promising change to the city, with the George Street redevelopment firmly in his sight. And we'll certainly have a review as far as the future goes, because the the lack of flexibility in what has been installed already is of grave concern. As the results rolled in, it became apparent Radich was going to secure the win easily, with the city's mayor-elect recording more than 20,000 votes, doubling the total of outgoing Mayor Hawkins. The former mayor didn't put his name forward for council, which will see him leaving office. Radich is part of the Team Dunedin group and says he felt a degree of serenity when the results came in on Saturday. He says he's looking forward to getting a team together so councillors can get to work. Well, I'm very excited to have new ones on board. And uh, I'm fascinated to see an old face back, but I would have to say Bill Ackland spoke extremely well on the campaign trail. Four of Jules Radich's team Dunedin running mates have been voted in. The new council will come together for their first meeting at the end of the month. In Dunedin, the South Today. Otago University has a major investigation underway after a digital security breach was found by a student. They found a document which allowed them to view private student and staff information. An investigation is underway to see who accessed the document and to find out if it was used in a malicious way. The information was available for about six weeks, with a technical fault from a newly installed software system causing the breach. A university spokeswoman says a permanent fix is being investigated, along with a review to prevent it from happening again. Invercargill is getting a new leader for the first time in 27 years as Sir Tim Shadbolt hands over the mural chains to Nobby Clark. Shadbolt's stunned by the electoral result, taking his time to reflect on some of the highlights before planning his next move. Protest From humble concrete contractor to New Zealand's longest serving and most recognisable mayor. Sir Tim expressing surprise at this week's results, which will see him relinquishing the mayoralty and leaving council behind. No, I'm still in a state of shock. <laughs> I can't believe what's happened. Shadbolt's best known for going the extra mile for publicity, doing a lot to raise the profile of New Zealand's southernmost city. Politics, but... Politics with humour. But a series of independent reports released last year pointed to a leadership void at the council, suggesting trouble was brewing behind the public profile. Invercargill's new mayor in waiting and former Shabbolt deputy, Nobby Clark, says the city is facing a range of pressing issues. And we need leadership. You can't just be a, um, a celebrity frontman. Clark is sceptical about Shadbolt's future with the city. He's just a man that needs to retire now and enjoy his retirement. Clark is looking to address a range of issues, including recycling workers' job security and the new Museums Commission. In Invercargill, the South Today. A fire at a Dunedin tavern over the weekend is being treated as suspicious after fire crews were alerted to a blaze in the early hours of Sunday morning. Fire and Emergency New Zealand says they were told about the blaze at the St Kilda Tavern on Prince Albert Road around 3am. Two crews attended and found a small blaze at the rear of the building, with a third crew called in to assist. Fen staff say no one's believed to have been in the building at the time of the fire. Now officials are treating the fire as suspicious. And meanwhile, near Dunedin's Waitati suburb, a gorse fire burned off in a gully off Deans Valley Road. 
A nearby resident filmed this footage of the blaze, where eight different crews were alerted to a fire on Mount Cargill Road before midday yesterday. A helicopter was also called in to help tackle the blaze. The fire was under control by around 2.45 p.m. Young actors from all different backgrounds made their way to Dunedin to show off their Shakespearean skills. The National Shakespeare School's production was hosted at Logan Park recently, with one student not letting his disability hold him back. Practice makes perfect as students prepare for their scenes. More than 40 thespians from all over the country made it to Dunedin recently to perform scenes they've been workshopping for only a week. The cast is made from students selected from regional competitions, with Shakespeare Globe Centre New Zealand assigning them scenes and lending a hand. But the scene directors are all ex-alumni. So it is very student driven and it's phenomenal what they achieve in that time. Kyron Andrew is a blind actor and one of the students selected for this workshop. He doesn't let his disability hold him back and says he just needs to map out the stage and have good communication between everyone. Um, yeah, like if I've memorised all the lines, all the movements, all the mapping, then it will come out hopefully really good. Half of the students involved will be selected to do a two-week workshop at the Globe Theatre in London next year. In Dunedin, the South Today. If I Yakane, still to come on the South Today. Up and coming Central Otago winemakers are put to the test. And it's a nail biter finish as the Meralty race comes to a close in Gore. Earth is a planet of extremes, extreme places, and extreme animals. But some animals are more extreme than others. Join us as we count down to find the most unusual, the most extraordinary, the most extreme. Better get down to John's Furniture Warehouse this weekend. It's a price rampage. And you can pay it off over 18 months interest free. Price rampage. And my mate John. Every day the team at Gillian supports grieving families at their time of need, from answering your questions to organising a farewell that reflects the wishes of your loved one. We can help. Call Gillian's today. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Great Britain has a collection of varied landscapes and countryside to rival anywhere else in the world. And the best way to see it is to walk. Welcome back. Young winemakers around central Otago showcased their skills recently, hoping to make a name for themselves. Alexandra hosted the Central Otago Young Winemaker of the Year competition, where aspiring viticulturalists battled it out for the top spot. Getting the measure of these young winemakers. 
Eight eager viticulturists entered in the Central Otago Young Winemaker of the Year competition recently, where they were tested on all aspects of winemaking. The contestants showcasing their wine production, taste testing and even marketing ability, with the competition allowing them to sharpen their skills. It helps the um, young winemakers focus and study, so it stretches them, it gives them a platform to make a name for themselves, um, but also it brings the community together. Six out of eight of the competitors are female. Granddaughter says the industry is seeing an influx of women, with many viewing it as a great career opportunity. Um, we've always found in Central Otago in particular there seem to be a lot of women entering these competitions, which shows they're really ambitious as well. It's very exciting. North Cantabrian Georgia Malhopt taking home the crown and will be heading to the national competition in November. In Alexandra, the South today. Well, just a handful of votes separate the top two candidates in Gore's nail-biting mayoral race, with the winner yet to be decided. The race to lead the Gore District Council is still too close to call. Incumbent Mayor Tracy Hicks is trailing 23-year-old challenger Ben Bell by just 13 votes. If Bell maintains his lead to take the race, he'll be the youngest mayor in New Zealand history. He says the vote reflects a split in the community. You know, we thought we I was definitely in with a chance, um, but 50-50 is what people were saying, and that's exactly what we got. Less than 100 special votes remain to be counted, with final results expected to be announced this Thursday. In Gore, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. One-term councillor Jules Reddick is Dunedin's new mayor-elect, beating former leader Aaron Hawkins in a landslide victory. Nobby Clark has claimed the Invercargill mayoralty off long-serving Sir Tim Shadbolt. And blind students Kyron Andrew followed fellow thespians on stage recently, showing off his Shakespearean skills. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT, and we welcome the editor, Barry Stewart. Kia ora, Barry. Hello, Hannah. Now what can we expect in your uh, paper? Well, we're still on the um, election theme. Mm -hmm. uh, prominent Targa Regional Councillor Michael Laws is in a battle to retain his seat. Mm -hmm. um, there's three positions available in his ward of Molyneux. Uh, he's currently sitting three. Mm -hmm. um, so special votes to come. So mm -hmm. Watch the so, space. Yeah, so Thursday, I think we, we hear about a lot of those other ones. It's going to be an interesting time. So, yeah. yeah. Um, Queenstown hospitality operators have welcomed the government's moves to allow more uh, migrants into the, or more migrants, chefs, mm -hmm. uh, to come in from overseas. So that's good news for the hospitality industry. Yes. Uh, financial pressures uh, are mounting and, and it could mean further staff reductions at the University of Otago. Uh -huh. And notorious Dunedin gang boss uh, has been found guilty of his involvement in a motorcycle licensing scam. Oh wow, oh, I look forward to reading so all read those stories. So read that on the court pages tomorrow. Sounds great, thank you Barry. Thank you. And time now for a look at the weather. The South Today weather, proudly brought to you by MoreMap, the skin cancer detection specialists. Looking at the situation, cool southwesterly airflow arrives overnight, easing tomorrow with sunshine on the way inland, but cloudy along the coast. Heading to the top of the South Island. Southwesterlies up in Nelson tomorrow with a high of 15. And both Greymouth and Christchurch looking cloudy with light winds and 14 degrees. Travelling to South Canterbury and North Otago now. Cloudy with southwesterlies through here tomorrow. Ashburton and Timaru can expect top temperatures of 14 degrees. And a bit cooler with 13 in Uwamaru. Westwards now through the central lakes and another fine day with southwesterlies around the lakes with some, yeah, southwesterlies skimming the tops of those mountains there. 14 degrees for Wanaka, Queenstown and Alexandra. Heading further south, highs in the low teens through here as we stop off in Balclutha and Gore with 13 degrees uh, and light winds and then we head down to the coast getting some clouds and a high of 12 tomorrow.
Now down to the deep south. Well, showers and cloudy tonight with southwest winds in Invercargill down to 7. Tomorrow, expect a sunny start with cold south westerlies easing up to 12 as the high. And Wednesday looks fine too with light winds and a high of 14 degrees. And lastly, heading to Dunedin. Strong southwest winds and the risk of showers tonight as it drops to a warm 10 degrees. A fine Tuesday ahead with cloud breaking and cool winds up to 12. And into Wednesday, well, mostly cloudy with some light southerlies and a high of 10 degrees. And that's the news this Monday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. And you can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. We'll see you again tomorrow. Ka kite a popo. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air.